I'm going to speak about uh, the future because this is my favorite subject. Um, and it will be also about um, collective intelligence. And I would like to um, replace the history of communication or the, the problem of contemporary communication into a historical and evolutionary perspective. Because obviously we are witnessing a big change, a big mutation in human communication. But this is not the first time in history where we witness such a mutation in communication. And I think that it, it's, a, it's a good thing to look back in the past to be able to interpret better what's going on and what will be the future. So the human collective intelligence is mainly based on the human memory and the way we exploit this memory. The memory is very important because it is the basis of culture. As you know, the animals and especially the, the mammals and the higher mammals communicate very well and if, even the insects communicate very well. But they have no memory crossing the gap between generations. One animal can learn something, but a society, an animal society, cannot learn. This is the great difference between humankind, the human race, and other uh, social animals. So we are able to accumulate a cultural memory. And all our knowledge, all our institutions are based on this memory and the way we are able to exploit this memory. So the first uh, tool we have to have a, a, a better way to transmit and to accumulate knowledge is language. Okay. Animals have no articulate language. And uh, this, uh, the emergence of language is contemporaneous of the emergence of humanity itself. Uh, um, Homo sapiens sapiens, uh, emerged uh, some 300,000 years ago. And at the same time, language emerged. And the way we transmitted knowledge was by speaking. So the culture from the beginning and f for the biggest part of the history of humankind was oral and was based on oral transmission. So the knowledge has taken the form of narratives, stories, myth, and also rites that are performed with the body and collectively in places, and all this is meant to reinforce the memory. And also from the beginning, we had uh, this um, very powerful way to, uh, to signify, which is the use of icons, like statues or drawings in, a, in caves and masks and all these kind of things, or fetishes and so on. 
So this is the basis, and this basis will never disappear. <laughs> it is the foundation, and it, uh, everything that comes after this is an addition, a new layer. It's not something that will replace oral communication. It, it will never disappear. This should be very clear. So the next stage in the history of communication is the invention of writing. The writing um, allows uh, human memory to be independent from uh, the embodiment of knowledge or the embodiment of the, the actual breath that is speaking. Uh, today we can read some papyrus or some written inscriptions uh, made by uh, the scribes of ancient Egypt or ancient Mesopotamia and it was not transmitted orally. It was deciphered even if the oral transmission has been interrupted. So this is an, an important difference. And also, um, if you think about the scale of the possible cultural memory, when there is only oral transmission, the maximum that you can transmit is the actual memory of a group of old people. Uh, when you have writing, you can accumulate indefinitely information and knowledge. In addition, the writing allows the management of economies, big cities, or empires. It has been done by the Mesopotamians, the Egyptians, the ancient Chinese, and so on. So writing is, um, goes with a huge transformation, a huge anthropological transformation. And this transformation encompass uh, the invention of agriculture, the invention of cities, the invention of s the state, uh, the tribunals, and the beginning of organized knowledge that is not necess necessarily dependent on narratives and myth. And writing is still here. It is just uh, additional layer in the mm, fabric or in the architecture of human memory. And then 